In this particular demonstration, we're going to use the Unity game engine to create a simple space shooting game uh, for distribution through a web browser. Uh, this is Dr. Brian Burton, and I'm creating this podcast to demonstrate for the beginner how to use the Unity engine to create a very simple game concept. Uh, you can find the full demonstration at burtonsmediagroup.com forward slash blog where I've got many tutorials on creating for mobile technology as well as game publication. The goals of this project is to create a simple 3D sh space shooting type game. We're going to have a simple ship and be out there destroying asteroids as they fly by. The genesis of this idea, the inspiration of the idea, is a tutorial that I watched on the Unity website by the Lorax. Uh, he created a great two-dimensional uh, proof of concept for a space shooting type game. Well, this is uh, an outgrowth of that concept, um, very different from what he did, but at the same time it is inspired by what he did. This is considered to be a starter project. I'm assuming that you have little to no skills with the Unity game engine. Uh, I've never created a full game concept from start to finish and wanted some basics to get started on this. So, or the focus on this project is to develop from the Unity engine side. Now you will need a few resources to be able to do this. Most importantly you will need the Unity game engine. You can go to unity3d.com go to the store and download the free engine and be able to do all of the, everything that I'm going to demonstrate today. If you're wanting to create your own models, uh, create your own backgrounds, textures, etc., you are going to need some 3D modeling software as well as some, a paint program. Uh, 3ds Max and Maya by Autodesk.com have a student version available that if you are a student you can download these for free for three years. Of course these are non-commercial licenses only for learning. Um, if you're wanting something that's free but can be used for commercial projects, you might want to go with Blender at blender.org that allow you to create 3D objects. I do want to clarify that I am not going through the modeling process in this project. I am focused on the game development side. I've got some pre-created models that I'm going to use for this, but as you'll see through the demonstration, you do not actually have to have any models to be able to do what I'm going to demonstrate. You're also going to need some kind of paint program uh, if you want to create your own backgrounds or, or uh, texture your particular objects inside the game. Uh, GIMP is a free one that's available that's open source or you can go with the professional grade and that would be Photoshop. It is the standard by which all other paint programs are registered. So I've got my Unity engine and I'm ready to get started with it. So first thing I need to do is go ahead and create a new project. So I'll go over here to File, New Project, and I'm ready to get started. I'm going to create this in the uh, project location. Just simply going to change the name of this. Um, I'm going to call this SF for Starfighter. Uh, just keeps everything simple. For this particular project and to demonstrate the power of Unity and how simply you can create your own projects, I'm not going to import any projects and that's really part of the demonstration on this on how simple it is to create a full-fledged project. Um, you'll of course can import packages to simplify creating different types of environments and it does make the creation process much easier but for this particular one I really want to create something that does not utilize any pre-made assets other than uh, some projects that I'm going to pull in later on. Once you hit create you'll quickly see the Unity Engine close and reopen and we're now ready to get started on our project. As you can see it has created it as um, SF. I'm going to go ahead and get some things set up in it that will save some hassles down the road. I'm going to go over here to file, go to build settings and go ahead and s select this as a web player. I'm going to be distributing it through a web browser and we'll tell it to switch the platform. As you can see it will also support uh, the PC and Macintosh, Android devices, uh, Apple devices as well as Xbox 360, uh, PS3, 
3s as well as the Wii. Those do require separate licenses for Android, iOS, Xbox, PSP, uh, PlayStation 3, and Wii. So we should be about ready to go. Um, I've got everything set up. Uh, you might want to insert your own company name down the road, but for right now, I think we're ready. Uh, default screen size on this is going to be 600 by 450. So we're, we should be ready to go. So we've got it switched and I um, can close that now. Now, in case this is the first time you've used Unity, I'm very, going to very quickly go through the, the parts of the screen. There's some wonderful tutorials if you're wanting more detailed layouts on the Unity website, but this will give you the quick and dirty basics. So you've got your menus at the top. You've got below that the scene and game tabs. For, and I am using Unity version uh, 3. If your screen looks different, you may be on a different version of Unity. So I've got Scene. This is where you're going to be doing the layout of and configuring everything in your environment. And then you also have a Game tab, which is what it's going to look like when you go to play. The game view is based upon the camera view. As you can see, you've got a small camera in there. When your camera is selected, you can see a camera preview, or the game view is actually the actual environment. When we have more built, we can hit the play button and actually play test our game environment. Underneath there, we've got a hierarchy area as well as a project area. Hierarchy is what is currently being used on the screen. Project is what is available to be used on the screen. So, and, oh, and then last, and, but most importantly, is the inspector area off to the right. The inspector area allows us to be able to modify and change information on the fly or at the design time so that we can get everything tweaked so the game is very playable and easy to use. Okay, so I'm ready to get started. Um, underneath project, I'm going to create a few folders. These folders will be used to help me to keep everything organized so I'll be able to find everything nice and neat as we progress with the project. So we'll create a scene, uh, a folder for the different scenes. Scenes can be likened to levels in a game. We create a different scene for every level or different environment that we want to play as we're going along in the game. It's just an easy method for organizing any kind of game type environment. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and create a folder for materials. And finally a folder for script. And if you accidentally create a folder within a folder, you can drag it out and it, it's then set ready to go. Uh, next thing I'm ready to do, I'm going to select scene, go to file, save as and create my first scene and this is going to be level one there we go and now level one has been created inside the environment you can see it's right there I'll drag it down to scene so that it's located within the scene folder and as we create more scenes later on in the game that will become critical for being able to view things when you reopen later on or you pause and come back to your project if you after you load the environment, you do need to double click on the scene and then go to level one to load that particular one. You can see where you're at in the game up here at the top where it says level one in my Starfighter game and it's being designed for a web player type environment. So we're now ready to move on from there. 